One of the uh, things that concerns me in the context of the property tax conversation is that we don't demonize education or the professionals that dedicate their careers to education. And part of the commitment that we made in passing 3050 was to look at fair funding formulas. Everyone knows 10 years ago, or a little over 10 years ago now, that the courts, we ended up getting rid of our formula. And we've been doing building equity. We've um, really been funneling the majority of our funding, 70%, to our urban areas um, over the last 10 years or so. We've also been providing our urban areas property tax relief uh, that may not be there as much for the suburban, um, although in some small form it is. They, and I say that, things like the hotel tax, the new drinking beverage tax. Well, they benefit, certainly they're selling big restaurants in Tiverton and Portsmouth. We have a lot more in Newport and a lot more in Providence. So the focus has been on the urbans. That's not to say the urbans don't need to continue to be important, but the question is, there was a lot of challenges from the communities, I'd say, both in the second year, the second five, in the suburban communities that they, um, that we were relying on the antiquated formula and that different things that occurred within the various communities that weren't being addressed by the funding formula. Uh, 3050 had a unique side effect. It brought our dead fellows together. An ad hoc group compro comprised of the NEA, the AFT, RIPAC, the League of Cities and Towns, the school committees, the all got together and started talking. Um, and they had a common bond. None of them liked 3050. No, so that, that some of them did. And as a result of those conversations, they presented to the joint Committee on Education Funding, chaired by Rep. Edie Jello and Senator Hannah Gallo, which started two years ago, a draft formula. We also simultaneously had a study commissioned about a year ago with associates to look at the various funding formulas. We're not there yet, but we are very close to a fair funding formula uh, being presented to the General Assembly. There have been uh, two advisory groups that have been appointed, comprised of a variety of individuals from the cities and towns, as well as the education community, uh, to to work on a funding formula. It wouldn't go in, even if we might, but I would love to see us pass it this year so it would be in place a year from now when the governor proposes his next budget because my concern is if we don't do it this year, in an election year it will be even more challenging. And that we will still need to tweak and address some of the exam issues. I fully expect we would have some type of hold harmless for all the communities because that would be a political necessity, um, I think, to secure passage. But perhaps we could really examine uh, the existing formula um, and a fair distribution amongst all the communities um, and a commitment from the General Assembly to funding. I know that we need to look at the issues of efficiencies within um, such as statewide teacher contracts that are raised and Blue Cross and statewide transportation and all of these various issues, but I think the first step well, those things, I know folks are talking about them out there, and I know those things are going on. Um, our communities, to be honest, here in East Bay, uh, through the uh, East Bay Collaborative, they've done a great job with the health insurance issue um, and some of the other issues. We're ahead of many other cities and towns in terms of our efficiencies. Uh, so what I would like to see is, um, I really would like to see a fund, fair funding formula passed um, because I'm very concerned that we have a golden opportunity with this diverse mix of people at the table looking at the funding formula. Um, good data that'll be stale if we wait another two or three years. Good. I'd like to 